Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'm on LeeChess.org, and I just got paired up playing a 5-0 game. Let's try Knight C6 and see if we get a Scotch or a Ray Lopez. All right, we'll go with Knight F6, and I guess Bishop E7 takes takes takes. I have Queen here. Now that that's defended, maybe this is the point where I play d6. So you go with the d4. This knight is pinned. It's a bit unusual. a3. Hmm. Haven't seen that one. All right, I'm threatening now to take and then follow up with this. So I have to go knight to d2. Wow, they're really allowing this move. We're not playing Crazy House. I've seen Crazy House variations where you allow this, you take, and then on Bishop takes Queen, there's Knight here. But in regular chess? Not so sure about that. So let's consider here. I have a pin. How could I really exploit this pin well? Um, well... I think I want to, hmm, let's go with king here, and uh, my idea is to play for f5, so this, I'm still going to try to uh, stay on the f3 pawn, so I'm going to look to move my knight and then play for f5, I'd really like to see this, okay. Well, I wonder if I have to, you know, let's, let's take a timeout for this. Now, on a queen exchange, then the king is going to have to step up to g2. Hmm. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Interesting. Just dropping the bishop back. Now, what I don't like is that there's some pressure against this guy. Hmm. Feel like I should be repositioning my knight right around this point. Let's try that. Now I really want to be able to do this, but I run into some tactical issues. Oh, it's not expecting that. Uh, let's start with this move. At least mask the bishop's view of h7, because if I trade too many rooks at the end, I could uh, lose this pawn. And maybe a good point right now is to do this move and look at the c4 square. Uh, so much for having uh, this idea of taking advantage of this pawn. Okay, well, I could exchange first. Let's do that, and then I could drop into c4. Let's do that. On rook takes rook, I'll take with the bishop. Keep him defended. And maybe even uh, try for this stuff. So, let's see. I want. I so want my king already on g8. But, uh, yeah, he's got a ways to go. Stuck in the corner. I could even, con okay. Is now the time to just, uh, well, maybe I should capture here. Uh, bishop takes knight, though? Let's consider bishop takes knight. Hmm. Or, uh, knight takes bishop. Knight takes bishop, pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop d6. Knight e2 is otherwise this is painful. Um, I really like my knight, though. I really like my knight on c4. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with this. Stick around with my knight on c4, because just like the bishop had pressure against this pawn, I have, a, I have some pressure against this pawn, which makes it, uh, Difficult for white to contest this uh, d file. So, is this a moment to take that pawn and force that knight backwards? Or maybe let's grab a tempo against the bishop first. And if he goes here, then there's a disconnect. You can maybe even look at this move. I don't know. If we uh, have a bunch of pieces swapped off, knights, rooks, in the end, I could look at this and have some pawns fixed on dark squares. 
This is maybe even a move right now. Yeah, I'm leaning towards this. Let's do it. I have some pressure against a3. I feel like their bishop is out of play. Also, if he moves, this is an idea. I have a more secure king. Did not see that move. Should be all right, though. I could take. A knight takes. I have this. Now I could take twice here. Rook to d7 shouldn't be any bother. Because I have king to e6, and he has to just go back. This knight is out of play. I think I could just take that pawn. Let's do it. I'm on the knight. It's just a check. I'm up a pawn. Let's give this check first. Careful. Be very careful. King improvement, just to stop the rook from entering, and now I have this square covered at least. Chop, chop, here. Hmm. A bit scary. This opens up the third rank, though. Let's insert this check. I don't need my rook patrolling the eighth rank. Aha, uh -huh, a rook exchange. Now how to do this exactly? I don't have to take, they're in a pin. Uh, let's also keep an eye on that clock. I think I want to just get pushing some. Yeah, let's get this majority going. I want to hold my ground here. I like having that g-pawn around to control that. Now that's a blunder, because my rook is defended with my knight. Yeah, they missed that. Maybe they're only seeing that the bishop was there to defend. Yeah. They just uh, dropped a piece there. Okay. I was ready to do this. Hmm. <laughs> Let's take the rook first. And let's just trade. That's a check. And I am up a piece. Yeah, just blundered there in the end. Mm, probably could have done one better uh, with that doubled f-pawn. This was maybe too, I don't know how to say, it just kind of fast, uh, thinking I'm, it was too far-fetched, this idea of, uh, oh, I'm going to move my king here, get out of a pin, and then try to get the f-file to open up. It was just by feel, there was zero calculation involved, and uh, I probably should have uh, calculated right around that point, because something was misplayed here for white, allowing, allowing knight here, like if anything, knight here is better. You know, the threat is to take, and on the queen takes, I'm winning because of this bishop position. A3 was odd. I don't know what A3 was about. I'm not sure. D4 is a move, probably. Taking advantage of this pin. Um, What was I planning to do right around this point? I think I could just play here and hold my E5 point. On captures, I have, I think, both recaptures, but, you know, just to show, if I take with the pawn, bishop takes knight, bishop takes, I am on this. So it's not like I'm losing e my e-pawn. I get their e-pawn in return. But, uh, yeah, they didn't go with d4, a3. Not seen that one. And maybe, maybe after I castle... This this should be in there. And, yeah, something else. I should be doing something else here. I think my first thought was this. Hmm. I don't know. I would really like to uh, keep queens on the board. But, yeah, the position's opening up some. I was starting to be a bit concerned about the knight coming in here, and I just want to control some squares with my c-pawn. I guess I could try to insist. I, I think that this was my initial thought, knight to d7, and then and then maybe carry through with f5. 
If it's the wrong idea, it's the wrong idea, but at least try to uh, follow through with it. A night here, I may be able to just work around him. You've got some isolated ponds, or was really some uh, holes over here, so I could camp out pretty well with some pieces. Maybe kick him at a later point, and uh, maybe maybe F5 here. I think as white, I would be wanting to do something like this, like they did in the game. But uh, even so, I could uh, I could probably give this knight a boot first, force him back, and then go with f5. And on this, maybe even move my knight forward some. Yeah, this was maybe a better idea, knight to d7, keeping queens on the board, because with this move, I'm basically saying I'm okay with the queen exchange, and I think uh, that's not the objective best. So maybe knight d7. Trying to go forward with that. It was better. We'll have a look at it. Now it turned, with the queens off, it turned into a battle over the D file. And with only one open file, as mentioned, this is a sensitive point. Trade too many heavy pieces, then this is awkward to defend. Probably was not necessary, this move. Knight to A4 is another move. Okay. Well, I got in that nice square here. They undouble the pawns there with f4, knight c4. And, yeah, I'm glad I did not give up uh, my knight for the bishop because, you know, I should see it. I should see this knight as uh, far more valuable than a bishop right around this point. He's tying down a rook. You know, and I must just be better here. But uh, let's put on the engine. Have a look at the uh, graph. I keep forgetting to uh, give that a quick click at the start. We'll see what the graph has to say. How white could do uh, a little bit better, I believe, out of the opening. I really just, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't quite wrap my head around the point of uh, the point of a three, at least at this uh, exact moment. Uh, may, maybe, maybe it was to uh, have him go in there, but that's maybe seems a bit too far-fetched. So, knight c3. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't like team white as soon as that move is played. One and a half advantage. Let's put on the arrows. No, oh, it likes knight h5. Oh, you know, I didn't even consider taking with the bishop. Hmm. What's the announcement? What's the graph saying? Yeah, it was better with those uh, captures on c3, and then it was level with the queens exchanged, and then it started tipping in my favor after a little bit. But right around here, what can white be doing instead of a3? Something normal? d4? I pointed out this. That's a move. And also capture and then follow up with bishop d7. Take. Yeah, I got doubled pawns, but it's a useful pawn. Controls some important squares. He's not such a well-placed piece on c3 anymore with him around. Maybe the b-file factors in one day. Some natural stuff, rook on the e-file. Bishop one day on f6. Convergence on b2. Just some rough thoughts. But, uh... It didn't go with the d4, a3. Castles. I go for a pin, and yeah. I already have to take out the knight. Well, have to is maybe strong, but yeah, computer suggestion is to take out the knight, preventing the knight jump. I guess another idea is to stop the knight jump with this. Yeah. They allowed uh, the piling up on that pinned piece. And I guess I could have done better. So what does it want to do right around this point? Queen to d7. And suppose the same move is played as in the game. Oh, bishop takes knight, pawn takes, and then queen h3. And now still, yeah, queen h3. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, this bishop is really, you know, where the light squares are weakened for white. It's on the king side. And this bishop can't get back. 
This guy isn't able to move. There's no there's no guarding these light squares with the bishop. I didn't see this idea. Queen d7, anticipating that there there are going to be these weaknesses and then slipping in. Nice. Yeah, I played king h8 there. And bishop h5. Likes d4. Hmm. Does like knight to d7. This is what I thought. Instead of the game c3, when I'm playing c3, the queens are now off, and it's a level position. King here instead of the bishop back. But yeah, it likes knight to d7. Okay, yeah, knight to d7. Bishop back, and then f5. Yeah. Yeah, I should have gone through with that. Yeah, just test it out. Why not? Going with this, try to try to put to use that move. You know, I, I did that for a reason, so I should at least try to follow through with it. And the big thing here is that the queens stay on board. Okay, yeah, knight d7. And in this ending, how could white have maybe done a little bit better? Yeah, it does not like b4. Yeah, I'm slipping into the light squares, securing my e5 point and looking to reroute. It's not really a fan of that. A knight on c4 is just enormous. It's worth far more than just three. This was the other line I was uh, calculating in the game, this, where I believe the knight must play here. Moves like this, this is awkward. Oh, okay. There's something like this available to get out of the pin. But, uh, yeah, I, I valued, uh, I think the end conclusion was that I just valued the knight as much better than a bishop being on c4. And my king is creeping closer, and, yeah. No, I'm just winning. Yeah, maybe a little bit too careless with the b4 move. I'm up a pawn. And, well, they blundered a piece in the game, but it's already, evaluation-wise, it it sees it as me being up a piece anyhow, basically. I gave a check. Should block. Yeah. I just blundered there. Okay, well, interesting game. Never saw that uh, A3 move there. Interesting uh, Roy Lopez Berlin. Uh, not the not the queenless middle game in Berlin, but uh, yeah. Okay, uh, well, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. And I hope you got something out of it. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.